Hey guys, it's coming from my review for The Predator. And what The Predator is essentially about is basically it does take place a few years after the events of the other Predator films. You know, things have been going a little bit better. Um, it's not as constant and things like that. The people are really starting to study the Predators. But when this kid ends up getting a hold of um, some technology, he ends up summoning them back to Earth. And now a bunch of uh, crew of ex-soldiers and this uh, biologist, they have to team up to try to... Uh, prevents, you know, the Predators from basically wiping out the human race altogether, and that's really all I'm going to say. So, The Predator overall, I was very conflicted with how to feel about this movie. As you guys know, I love the first Predator. Predator 2 and Predators, I end up not reviewing just simply because I don't have a lot to say about either of them. Predator 2, I honestly really hate. Uh, I think it's a really awfully made film that tries to do something different and really does fail miserably. Um, and then Predators, I thought, had some good ideas, but in general just didn't really go much of anywhere interesting and just end up being very very middle of the road, and uh, when it came to The Predator, I was really hoping this film could be something good. You know, this is the fourth attempt to try to capitalize on the success, well, actually the third attempt, if, you know, because there was, of course, the first one, to capitalize on the success of the first movie. They have not been able to do it, but seeing the cast, seeing that Shane Black was involved, it did have me genuinely intrigued. The trailers weren't the best until that most recent trailer. That actually did get me very excited for, and I was really hoping that the film would be the most like that trailer and while I can confirm that yes that trailer is very close to the tone of this film it unfortunately is more of a detriment than I expected. The Predator is not a bad movie. I don't think it's as bad as people are really saying it is, but it is a very disappointing film overall that really does lack a strong narrative and we're just getting into right now starting off with the cast. And that's the thing that's really unfortunate about this film, because I actually do think pretty much everyone did do at least a decent job here. Uh, let's talk about Boyd Holbrook. Not a huge fan of him. Uh, I'll just say that right off the bat. I am not a huge fan of this actor. He's usually very bland to me. I don't really think he's all that great. Here, I thought he did a good job um, as the character of Quinn McKenna. You know, he's not really doing anything that big, but it did seem like he was putting, you know, a little bit more. He, he was into it for the most part. I do think he did do a good job here. Uh, the character of McKenna doesn't really offer a lot, but I do think that Holbrook did the best he possibly could in this role. Um, is he miscasted? Yes, I would definitely say, you know, they could have gotten someone a little bit stronger, but for what he had, I do think he did a better job than expected. However, for me, the standout easily was Sterling K. Brown as the character of uh, Will Trager, who I really love this character a lot. We'll get to the, the character we'll get to a little bit later, but Sterling K. Brown is known for doing relatively serious roles, and this is really one of the first roles he can do where he can just kind of sit back and have a great time with it, and you can tell he's absolutely doing that. He puts his heart and soul into this movie. You can just tell he's having a grand old time with it, and there are things that Sterling K. Brown did in this movie that I didn't know that he was capable of doing, and I just really loved what we got out of him here. He had such a wide range, and it honestly made me wish that he was the lead, because he's just doing such a great job, and nobody really is on his level, but he was just so great here. He continues to show why he's one of the most uh, charismatic actors working today, and I really did love what he did here. As far as everyone else go, I think everyone did a pretty solid job, you know, Trevante Rhodes. Keegan-Michael Key, I thought, had some hilarious lines for sure. He definitely seemed like he was really into it. Him and Thomas Jane have this great dynamic. Uh, for those who are worried, Olivia Munn is good here. I do think she did do a good job with what she had. Are there parts of the film where you can tell that she is a little bit lost and maybe not as into it? Sure, but it actually does go with the character because the character herself is supposed to be like this disgruntled, um sort of science teacher, so I do actually think it works in that regard. Uh, who really surprised me, and not for the better, was Jacob Tremblay. Uh, I've been a huge fan of him up to this point, but I did not like him in this film. He's supposed to be playing this autistic son of uh, Holbrook's character, who has autism, you know, he, um, he has, like, severe Asperger's and really bad sensory issues, and, oh, this just did not work at all. I thought it was way too over the top. It really did not 
not seem like Tremblay understood what kind of character he was playing. And again, it just, it, it saddens me to say because I really do appreciate this actor a lot and I really have loved everything I've seen him in, but this is the first role that just didn't really work for me here. But overall, I think everyone else did a pretty solid job overall. But now we really do have to get to the directing and the writing, which, of course, the film is directed by Shane Black, and it's cool that he directed it. You know, it definitely does feel like the franchise is coming full circle. As we know, Shane Black was, like, the first person killed in the first Predator. Spoilers if you didn't know that, but that's a big reason why he is directing this film. You can tell it's something he's probably wanted to do for a while. And the directing to this film, it is kind of clunky. Uh, to me, it felt like he was trying to inject some fun into the script, and he did do a very good job with that. There definitely are a lot of fun moments. There definitely are some lines that I, you know, there definitely were some scenes that I had a lot of fun with, and I do think he did a very good job with that. But anytime the film tries to get serious, it really doesn't work. And it's mainly because a lot of this film just feels like a comedy. It's very much in that tone, and just any time it tries to get serious, you just don't really feel it. The shift is just not very natural at all. But I wouldn't really fault uh, the directing for that. It's mainly the writing, which again is by Shane Black and is incredibly disappointing because, look, is the film a lot of fun at points? Yes. And like I said, I do like this cast. I think they worked very well together. And there are a lot of fun moments throughout this film. You know, Keegan-Michael Key cracks a lot of jokes. Thomas Jane cracks a lot of jokes. You know, Trevante Rhodes cracks a lot of jokes. And a lot of times, they do land. And for the first hour or so, I was enjoying it. Except when I started to realize that, aside from some jokes, that's really all the movie has to offer, unfortunately. The film is very much undermined by the comedy, and that is very unfortunate. And, uh, you know, because of the fact that there really isn't anything going on in this film narratively. You know, the biggest narrative that we have is that Sterling K. Brown wants this object that Jacob Tremblay's character has, and he's trying to track it down, and... Uh, you know, Jacob Tremblay's character, he's basically like the main reason why the Predators are uh, sent back to Earth, and now we have this whole team, and they're trying to stop it from happening, and Holberg is trying to protect his son, and that's really all there is. There's really not much else going on narratively, and I think that really is the biggest problem with this film, because again, as fun as it can be, there were a lot of times where I felt like there could have been a lot more going on. There's a lot of character development that is very much rushed. The most character development we get is, like I said, with Boyd Holbrook and with Jacob Tromley. There is a good story in there somewhere. We get the sense that, you know, Holbrook is someone who is a uh, ex-soldier, and he has, you know, an ex-wife and things like that, and he's kind of trying to make up for that. Um... But we see that, you know, he still works very hard in his job. And then Jacob Tromblay, he's kind of like uh, the character in uh, Kin where he's not really, you know, he's not really respected in school. And he has this uh, disability and things like that. But they don't really do anything with it. They're way too focused on just getting to the next uh, joke and getting to the next fun scene. And I think that really does bog the entire movie down overall. For example, there is the scene in a motel room, and I thought it was a lot of fun. You know, I enjoyed what was going on in the scene overall, but halfway through it, I just kind of sat there and thought, how much better would this be if instead of all these jokes, we would actually try to sprinkle some character development there and maybe get more into the characters here but we just don't because aside from those two characters the rest of the guys forget about it there's nothing especially when it comes to the marines that mckenna is paired up with uh there's like nothing to them they have their quirks here and there but other than that there's nothing to them as characters and Again, I really do think that hurts this entire film overall. I, I do want to reiterate, I think that really is the film's biggest problem, is that they don't want to focus on the characters. They're way too focused on the humor. And I understand that Shane Black has a real good knack when it comes to satire, but he's also really good at character development. Look at the nice guys, for example. And the fact that that wasn't there, I think very much did disappoint me. I really needed more character stuff and there really wasn't much else to latch onto at the end of the day like when these characters are having fun sure there are times where it's a lot of you know it's it's very fun to enjoy and it's very easy to get entertained by 
But when it really does come down to it, did I care about these characters at all? Am I going to remember them? No, there's really not a single one I'm going to remember. Even Sterling K. Brown, as much as I enjoyed him, he's just the stereotypical villain where, like I said, he wants this machine for his own good. He's trying to stop... Um, you know, the Predators, and we actually do get a motive for the Predators here, which I think honestly kind of ruins a lot of the suspense there, because part of the uh, greatness of the first one is that we knew so little about the Predators, and that's what made them so scary. They were this unknown species, and this film, they try to develop them a little bit more. They try to give them more layers, and it really doesn't work at all. If anything, like I said, I think it really does hurt the film, and I really was not a fan of that. The right in this film is just kind of all over the place. There's a lot of stories that don't end up going much of anywhere. There's way too many characters in this thing. Uh, specifically, you know, someone like Yvonne Strahovski, I think, is completely wasted here. She has, like, nothing to do in this film. There's a lot of actors that are very much like that, and it's just very disappointing overall. So, again, I've said what I knew about the script. Uh, the visual effects in this film. Now, I will say the costume of the Predator still does look very good. There are some good shots here and there. But I'm not going to lie, anytime this film tries to utilize CGI, it is laughably bad. I mean, especially these dogs that uh, the Predator has now. Because the Predator's not alone. The Predator has become a lot more intelligent, and it's had all these advanced features. And that is a cool idea, but it has, like, these dogs now. And these are, like, these, you know, robotic, weaponized dogs. And they could not look any more fake. I don't know if it's the worst CGI of the year. It's certainly the most fake-looking I've seen in the longest time. I mean, nothing about it looks looks real. Anytime characters are interacting with it, it just looks like they're interacting with nothing, and it was very disappointing, especially knowing uh, how long this film has taken to come out, and the fact that Shane Black has wanted to do this for so long. The fact that this is the final product, I think it's just very disappointing, and is honestly kind of inexcusable. Um, I just, I'm really shocked that I watch Predator, and those effects hold up better than the effects in this movie. Movie. And the effects in there, mind you, are very minimal. It's mainly all like, you know, just simply someone in a costume and little, you know, practical effects here and there. And when you try to implement all this CGI, it looks extremely fake and it really does not work at all. Uh, the score here, I suppose, is fine. And the editing, like I said, this film is extremely choppy. Uh, it's not very well focused either, especially knowing that that one scene was cut out of the film with Olivia Munn. You definitely do feel that. But also, Edward James Olmos' role. If you guys remember, Edward James Olmos was supposed to be in this movie and was mysteriously cut out of it. I don't remember why, but they completely cut his character out of this movie, and you really do feel like something's missing. The whole movie, you're like, why does it feel like there were more scenes here? Why does it feel like this wasn't supposed to be the first scene? When Olivia Munn was introduced, especially, I'm like, there's this doesn't feel like this was supposed to be her introductory scene. It feels like there was supposed to be more here, and there just wasn't, and I don't know what ended up going on the cutting room floor and what made the final product, but again, something about the film just felt very very empty in that sense, not just because of the character moment, but because of the way it's cut. Um, also, the way this film does end, the climax of this film has to be one of the most dragged out climaxes I have seen all year. And again, I didn't review Predator 2, but I thought that climax was dragged out. That is nothing compared to this. I mean, it is mainly, I think it's like 30 minutes into the movie, like the last 30 minutes of this huge action set piece. And it's not interesting. It's honestly kind of boring the way it all does play out. And the ending of the movie, the way the movie does kind of set up its sequel is absolutely ridiculous. They go in a complete like superhero type direction and if that's where they're going with these movies I don't know if I want to see another Predator film. I genuinely don't know, to be honest with you, after this movie, if we're ever going to get a good Predator film. I think that Arnold Schwarzenegger film was one of a kind. I don't think it's ever going to be topped. And this film, it's trying very hard to do that. Going as far as to literally have a character do the famous get to the chopper line. Yeah, that's in this movie. It's really cringy, but it's in this film. And there's a lot of dialogue exchanges that are very much like that. You can tell they're doing whatever they can to try to, you know, recapture the success of the first film. They try to get the old score back in there. They try to have, you know, really 
fun characters and all this fun banter, but they forgot what made the first movie so good. What made the first movie so good is not the uh, characters that were going on, because the characters weren't the important part of the first movie. Sure, they were there, but what's important to the first movie is discovering who the Predator was and learning how to survive in this situation and getting more into the Predator's head. And in this film, while we do get more into the Predator's head, we know so much about the Predator now that the Predator is no longer scary, and I don't think there's really going to be able to come back from this because now we know what their motive is, and their motive in general just doesn't really make a lot of sense overall. Uh, like I said, this film just really fell flat in pretty much every way possible. It does have a cast that I really did enjoy. There were some things I was having a lot of fun with, but overall, there were just so much... This movie just could have been so much more. There were so so many more things that they could have done with this film. They really could have dived deeper into the characters. They could have leaned more heavily into, I think, some of the more terrifying aspects of this film. But no, we just, we gotta make jokes. That That's what matters, apparently. It's just making joke after joke. That's all this film really cares about. And I think just at the end of the day, while again, some of them are funny... It really does not bode well for the film overall. It just becomes kind of monotonous after a while, and you're just kind of waiting for things to get serious. And once it does, it just feels very jarring in that sense. So overall, this is easily one of the biggest disappointments of the entire year. And I am definitely going to give The Predator overall a C-. minus. Like I said, I really do like Shane Black as a director a lot, but this just fell incredibly flat, and I just don't know if we're ever going to be able to get a good Predator movie again, but that's really it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know you guys saw this movie overall. Left your thoughts, and we'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.